Hello everyone. This is Savitya Sivakumar. I am the Region 10 student representative and you have joined us for our session two of the student track of SYWLC 2020. Without further delay, let me call Mr. Pasan Petyagoda, our SPARCS coordinator for IEEE Asia Pacific MGA Student Activities Committee. Pasan, over to you. Hi. Uh, thanks a lot, Savitya. And uh, hi, everybody. We are here at the SYWL virtual conference for the first time. And it has been a completely a different experience to you as well as to me. And in this particular case at the student track, we are looking at what a multinational company would expect from a French graduate. Why we take multinational companies is because uh, we are at a global global platform now, and IEEE is a global uh, entity. At the same time, uh, we are covering the Asia Pacific region, which represents uh, more than 30 countries. So we thought of going for a multinational platform and inviting four eminent speakers to, who actually have experience in speaking uh, in working in the multinational companies to hear their opinion on what a multinational company would expect from a fresh graduate. Uh, we all know that all, all of us, the IEEE members, do have a, a degree certificate by the time we pass out. That is obvious. But would a degree certificate itself just suffice for a graduate to go through and be recruited by a multinational company? At the same time, would that be enough for them to market themselves or to pitch themselves as the best candidate uh, in a multinational company. So this is the basic question we are going to answer. And uh, to do so, we have four uh, speakers with us, uh, starting with Mr. Nicolas Vigishaw, who's a country manager for Zuiz, which is a, a Paris-based construction company who specializing in electrical and mechanical engineering. And we have Mr. Safanka Jayadatha, senior manager, head of factory supply chain in Nestle who has worked in Sri Lanka as well as in India, managing supply chains on behalf of Nestle, which is a multinational manufacturing company, who will give uh, his perspective on this. Then again, we will be having Mr. Samit Limana, intern motor design at Tesla, where electronic designs and automobile has now been the hot topic. Uh, Samit will let us know as an intern what he has been doing and what he had and what, in general, it is expected from a fresh graduate to be recruited in companies in the caliber of Tesla. And for the Q&A session, we will be also having Mr. Samara Sekara, a software engineer at Google, who is now based in Singapore and working for Google. He will bring out some important aspects. At the same time, we'll answer your question as to how companies like Google operate and how do they recruit fresh graduates and to answer your questions on if you are a person who's interested in this level, in the software industry, how you could potentially pitch yourself to be selected in a company of this nature. So this is our setup. And uh, we have already received a couple of questions through emails to which we will be answering during the Q&A session, as well as appropriately, I might try to put these questions to the speakers as and when they are joining and as and when they are presenting. At the same time, all the balanced questions will be answered at the Q&A session. So feel free to type your questions in those questions on the chat you have uh, so that uh, I should be able to note them down and put to the speakers as and when without disturbing them. And uh, so that's all about the presentation. And I think we are good to move with the first speaker. So I invite uh, Mr. Pasankar Jayadasa to uh, this presentation to give them a briefing about uh, who Sasanka Jayadasi is. He is a graduate from the University of Moratua, uh, holding a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering, and uh, then completed his postgraduate, uh, his master in business administration from Postgraduate Institute of Management. And he has worked in Sri Lanka as well as in India in a couple of positions in Nestle in uh, supply chain management. And uh, he has also been a summer intern for the internship program by MS Holdings, Dialogue Asia, the Employees Bank, 
and uh, during his uh, university time, he has been in the director board of the Rotary Club of University of Manipur. Mr. Sasanka Jayadasa, over to you. Thank you very much, Hassan. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. You can go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, very good morning and a good afternoon, and I'm sure in some cases a good evening already in uh, Far East Asia uh, to all of you. It's, it's, it's great to have you here, and it's a great privilege uh, for me to talk to all of you today. Uh, so, I have titled my presentation as Reaching for Stars. Why I have uh, titled it like this is because uh, while in the university, uh, I know all of you have dreams, targets, and you want to be different to the others because all of you are unique. And in order to reach the stars, I will show some of the tips that I have in mind, some things that I did, certain things that worked for me, certain things that did not work for me. Uh, hopefully, it would be useful to some of you. So if we move on uh, with the presentation, I will give a uh, short introduction about myself, just to give you an idea of the path that I have taken so far. I uh, graduated as a chemical engineer approximately nine years ago uh, in 2011 uh, from a local university in Sri Lanka called University of Moratua. And in between, I also did a MBA uh, from another university in Sri Lanka. Uh, if I touch some of my career milestones so far, after my graduation, I joined Nestle in Sri Lanka uh, as a supply chain executive. Now, I'm sure this uh, could raise some questions to some of you. Uh, why, uh, after an engineering degree, I uh, joined a supply chain career, right? Uh, so, uh, my thought process was, okay, I had uh, tried an internship in engineering as well as in supply chain. And I thought um, supply chain is something that I would be more interested in, in order to use my uh, skill set better. Yeah. Uh, so, I will touch upon some of these things as we move along the presentation. Uh, so, it could be helpful to some of you who have uh, other options in mind other than just sticking to a co-engineering job. So after about uh, one and a half years, I had that opportunity to move on to our regional head office in India. So I was based out of New Delhi, India for about three and a half years. It was quite an interesting uh, chapter in my career and in my personal life also. Uh, before going to India, I did not have any friends in India. So for the first time, I went into a new country. Uh, it was quite challenging in the beginning, but I enjoyed uh, my uh, stay over there. And uh, about three years back, I returned uh, back to Sri Lanka, and I took over the position of uh, supply chain head in our factory, uh, which is based uh, about 70 kilometers from the capital in Sri Lanka, which is in a place called Kuruakala. Uh, so if we move along the presentation, I have a question for you guys. I know I cannot see you, unfortunately, today, and I cannot see your responses. But I want to uh, put a question uh, in my next slide to you guys. What do you want to uh, do with your life? You don't have to answer me. You cannot answer me. But I want you to think uh, of an answer in your mind. You will have a lot of options as you go along uh, the way. After you graduate, if you move uh, to the next slide, you will either join the corporate sector, you will join as an engineer, or you will join as a different, uh, um, uh, in a different capacity, or you can start your own organization, you can become an entrepreneur, or you might even think of joining the service sector. Or in Sri Lanka, many of our engineering graduates join the government sector as well. Uh, I'm sure those opportunities are there in your respective countries as well. So my message is, guys, if you move to the next slide, the possibilities and the options that you have in front of you as an engineering graduate are endless. So the options that you have today are much more than what it was 10 years back. 
So if I had like five options as an engineering graduate, now there are 50 options. So you need to have an open mind, first of all, when you are entering the corporate world, when you are entering uh, the world as an engineering graduate. If you move to the next slide. I've titled uh, the rest of the presentation as winning in the corporate junk. Now, if you move to the next slide, you will see a picture um, uh, of a tiger. One more slide, please. I want to uh, place this question in front of you. Why do I uh, call this a jungle? Now, when you are in university, you are in a certain comfort zone, guys. We are surrounded by friends. We are surrounded by people who are willing to support you, uh, close ones. Whenever we have a challenge, whenever we have a problem, we are secured by this uh, structure. But when you are out there in the real world, there are a number of challenges, there are a number of problems that will come on your way. So in a way, you're like this tiger that you see on this photo. If you move on, the point that I want to make here is that you don't want to be the fastest. So you just have to run faster than you. You just have to create the best version of you in order to be the best person that you can be. If you want to reach the stars, you just have to discover yourself. Or in another way, you have to discover the best version of you. Now, if you move to the next slide, I will share a small story. Now, I showed you a photo of a tiger, right? Now, that, that's a photo from Africa. Now, this is a photo in an African jungle. And the story goes like this. Every morning, uh, when a uh, gazelle wakes up in the morning, he just have one target. Just have to run faster than the fastest cheetah who's out there. Okay. And also, similarly, what goes in the mind of this uh, cheetah? Every morning, he just has to uh, wake up and then outrun the slowest gazelle. See, equation is as that. So uh, I just want to put this thought across to you guys because uh, it's slightly competitive out there than in the university. So you just have to find the best version of you and then uh, stand out from the pack in order to uh, emerge from the others. If you move to the next slide, I will share some tips on how you stand out, how you create the best version of yourself. Yeah. So in this presentation, I will share five tips. One more slide, please. This is essentially what I believe are the most important things that you need to uh, have within yourself while entering the corporate sector or uh, any career that you select. So the uh, first tip or the first point is about self-awareness. Okay. Now, self-awareness could be something that's familiar because I'm sure in other presentations that you would have heard, you would have heard about this concept. Yeah. Now, if you move one more slide, please. Uh, it's about understanding what your strengths, weaknesses, and also what are the opportunities and threats that are out there in the external world. Now, when I recruit a, a person or an engineer to uh, Nestle, we have about 100 engineers working in our factory today who have come from different engineering colleges in Sri Lanka and some uh, expatriates who have done their studies outside Sri Lanka are also with us. Now, whenever I interview a new graduate, the first question that I have is, is about the person himself. I want to understand whether the person is aware about himself. Now, I cannot compare myself with Pasan because my strengths and weaknesses are different to Pasan's strengths and weaknesses because every one of us are unique. Now, you need to understand what are the unique strengths, what are the unique things that you need to uh, leverage on as friends and also things that you need to improve upon. One more slide, please. Now, 
you guys are part of the IEEE network. Now, I'm sure you have a lot of opportunities to integrate with uh, people uh, in IEEE that are outside your country. Now, in a way, you guys already have a head start in terms of my second point. That's about embracing diversity. Now, guys, like I mentioned in the beginning, when I went to India during my first two years of the career, it was a big challenge for me. Now, I did not have any friends in India. And I'm sure in the map, you know where Sri Lanka is located. It's just below India. Though we are very close geographically, in terms of cultures, we are quite different. So I had a little bit of a challenge in adjusting myself to India, adjusting myself to the setup there. So in the first few months, I struggled a little bit. But I realized if I'm to survive the next three years over here, I had to embrace this diversity. I have to accept uh, the different cultural attributes in India and get used to it because I cannot change the culture over there. I had to rather get used to it and get integrated with it. Now, if you move to the next slide, all of you are in a certain comfort zone. You, even in university, if I take you back to the first day in your university or first week or first month in your university, I'm sure you try to find people who are just like you. So you try to find a comfort zone, right? Uh, and during the university uh, course, whatever three years or four years it may be, I'm sure you try to spend much time uh, with the people who are like you um, with a similar background. But the important message that I want to give you guys is if you are to success, be a success, if you are to be successful in your journey, you um, want to uh, increase your or stretch your comfort zone. If you go to the next slide, uh, you have to take more and more challenges. And also, you have to make more and more mistakes because you will learn only through these mistakes that you do. And also, uh, it's not about uh, just knowing, uh, just uh, you know, building uh, on what you have learned in the university. Along the way, you uh, continuously learn because in this life, you are a continuous student. And also, you learn to take risks and uh, stretch your comfort zones accordingly. So uh, this is an important message because I see a lot of young graduates who come uh, to our workplace, sometimes with a uh, first class uh, or a second upper, being the best stock, et cetera, sometimes do not uh, find themselves in a good position in the organization because they don't make this adjustment. So it's very important, guys, because it's not about uh, your degree certificate or it's not about your uh, first class or second upper always. Because when you join a workplace, it's a different atmosphere. You have to um, get used to the setup uh, there in the workplace and build your way accordingly. Let's move on. Let's go to the uh, third point. Now, specifically in a manufacturing organization, guys, this point is really, really important. Uh, whether you are able to think out of the box and find creative solutions to the problems that are there, in the workplace. If you move on to the next slide, I will pause here for a moment for you to take a look. Now, sometimes um, we work so hard uh, when we encounter a problem, but after we work so hard and after we find a solution, sometimes we realize that was a simple solution that was available, right? So I want to draw your attention to this particular image. Sometimes it's about working hard versus working smart, guys. Because sometimes there are very creative solutions, not complex solutions, very simple solutions that are available there. Now, you will be able to find these uh, answers if you have an open mind, if you are able to think out of outside the box, and if you are able to think outside your uh, typical silo of working. Uh, next slide. Now, another question to you guys. Does it matter how you do it as long as you get it done? What do you think? Now, the answer could be maybe it matters. Obviously, you need to follow a certain ethical standard. You need to do it in the right way. You cannot sometimes take shortcuts. But at the same time, it's not only the standard way of working that will get you to the final result. 
all this think carefully there could be creative solutions just next to you sometimes these are not uh, you know this is not rocket science in a organization like nestle uh, when you work in a nestle factory sometimes uh, you will realize you don't need to be a einstein to find uh, some of the solutions now if i talk about myself i was not the uh, batch top or i was not among the people who got a first class uh, but during uh, my initial years uh, i tried to look up to certain people that i admired within the organization and try to find answers uh, to some of the basic problems sometimes these were smart ways of doing things yeah so uh, just a small thought that i want to leave with you now let's move on to the next slide where i give the uh, fourth success tip this is about uh, attitude now sometimes when we get graduates we realize um they are so uh, high about their degree or their qualifications etc but times you can learn from the people uh, who have been working at that workplace for 15 20 years sometimes without a degree so um, unless you have this mindset or attitude and uh, make sure yeah. so let's move uh, one more sl uh, slide here i want to give a message to you guys because failure is an important part of success now if you take any successful person in this world you take an example from any uh, industry or any engineering discipline you will realize that they have failed so many times so many times but they converted those failures to uh, successes because they learned a lesson out of every failure if you move on uh, to the next slide i will take thomas alva edison as an example now he said some people interpreted his mistakes or his failures as uh, you know uh, mistakes but what he believed is if he made 10000 mistakes it's about finding 10000 ways that will not work or in other words new solutions so he is a person who converted these failures to successes so that's the message that i want to give you guys because um uh one or two setbacks or one or two failures really puts us down and sometimes we get so demotivated and demoralized and sometimes we think that's the end of life but trust me guys during my stint in india i had these doubts in the beginning of my career i thought i wouldn't be able to make it one or two mistakes i did and then i thought okay i will not be able to come out of it but since i decided to keep going i was able to uh, complete a three year successful stint over there in a very challenging environment and come back to sri lanka to take on a, a leadership role in sri lanka so i'm sure you guys also will create such stories and you know convert your failures to successes now if i move on to the next slide wherein i give my final message now i'm sure you would have heard about this tagline uh, steve jobs used to say this a lot it's about staying hungry and staying foolish yeah what does this mean it's not about you know uh, staying hungry as we typically say but if you are continuously looking for uh, opportunities if you are continuously looking for opportunities or chances to learn and to grow that's about staying hungry and what does staying foolish mean yeah in in our setup sometimes we find uh, uh, professors yeah even in uh, environments like nestle who want to uh, showcase their uh, work and to uh, you know uh, portray themselves as success people successful people but often they miss out to learn so that's why i want to give this message stay foolish because always there will be a point to learn from the person sitting next to you so that's the message that i want to give and if you want if you move to the next slide 
remember to always stay a student of your craft. Whatever field that you go into, remember that you will be a lifelong student. No matter how good you get, no matter how successful other people perceive uh, you to be, remember to be a student, remember to learn every day. Because this is an essential part on your uh, career. Because whatever new role or new opportunity that you get, unless you are open, unless you are not open to learn, uh, you will not grow. So uh, this is an important point that I want to leave you with. Uh, so that brings us to the my small message. Um, so if I quickly wrap up, first message is about being self-aware. And then second, embracing the diversity, embracing the differences. And third, thinking out of the box and having op being open-minded to new opportunities and having the right attitude always. And finally, staying hungry and staying foolish. Thank you very much. Over to you, Pasan. Thank you so much, Pasan. I'm sure that was really inspirational as a person who has been working in Nestle in a couple of countries and who has really successfully perceived uh, your career through um, uh, these years and have achieved a real growth. I'm sure the points you did put on the table were really uncommon and was of uh, use to our participants as well. So I think we wish to see you at the Q&A session as well. Meantime, uh, let me invite and introduce the next speaker of our session. He is Mr. Nicholas Bigishop, a country manager for Zwiz, which is a French-based uh, multinational company, who are more into projects, construction, uh, and a giant in the field operating in multiple countries. Uh, Mr. Nicholas is now uh, working as a country manager who has previously been an execution director for EBC projects in Delhi, India. He has also worked uh, as a project director in Dubai, UAE, and has worked and been responsible as a project manager for multi-billion USD projects. You can just imagine uh, what level of experience he should be having in terms of uh, execution of projects. And uh, to add to that, he has been a project manager and executed projects in Australia, in Malta, as well as in Doha, Qatar. So he is, by his name, has worked in different countries, in different areas, and different environments. Mr. Vigishop, now uh, the simplest question we can put in front of you on the table is, what do you think, considering your experience, a fresh graduate should perceive, a fresh graduate, graduate should have for them to be successful in a company like Sweden? Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you very much, Pasan. And, uh... Hi, everybody. It's for me a great pleasure to be in front of you today. So um, it's very interesting because um, uh, I know that somehow I was selected as a speaker today because of uh, the color of my hair. So it reminds me that, yes, I have been in this industry for uh, quite some years now. But, uh, you know, every time I think about it, uh, it looks like uh, I remember when I was a fresher, uh, like if it was yesterday. So. For me, it's still uh, still very close. And um, this question I'm asked today about um, what uh, multinational expects uh, from a fresher is exactly something I was uh, I was thinking uh, some few years ago when I was uh, in your position. And uh, okay, I, I remember it was it was a very important thing. I, I kept on asking this to myself. And uh, now, okay, with the light of my experience. Um, I can uh, I can give you some uh, some ideas about that, but you know, at the end of the day, what I would say is that um, it's a very interesting question, but maybe it's not a question you should think about too much, because um, at the end of the day, um, you know, you are you are who you are, and um, so-called characteristics are already inside you, so. There's not much you can do about your own characteristics, and that's fortunate because uh, this is how you are. Um, but that being said, I will still try to put some a few few tips on the table so that you can uh, you can think about that. Um, first thing I would say is that uh, when you are a fresher, definitely uh, 
you have some uh, some technical skills. You have worked a lot on uh, uh, during your studies, so you you know you know many many things. And um, frankly speaking, when you are on the other side of the table and uh, you try to recruit a, a fresher, you will not worry too much about those technical skills. So. Um, you know, it is it is clear from the employer that uh, if he goes to to employ a fresher, uh, he knows what um, what is to be expected, and he knows that uh, the the level of uh, of technical skills will be there. So that's not really the criteria. Um, you know, we will not bother too much looking at uh, all the marks. We can we can reasonably assume that uh, okay, you have the technical skills, so that will not really make the difference. Um, and you know it's interesting because I'm from a scientific background, so I mean I used to think always, okay, one plus one, two, those things. But when it comes to recruitment, somehow it goes much beyond this, and um, it is not not only the the scientific criteria. It is also more about uh, about uh, you and about your personality, your attitude. So that is the the most uh, most important of all. Uh, it all depends on who you are and what uh, what image you are giving of yourself and uh, how you you show to the people. So here are my my small tips to you. So when when you are in a position to be recruited, you need to be to be natural and to show what is your personality. And actually, you know, if I am recruiting you, what would be my criteria? I will see you and I will. Try to think about you as a member of my team. And the only question I will have is that, okay, I am happy to have this one with me. Am I, am I happy to see these people growing under me? And uh, I am willing to, to take him uh, with me. That's, that's the, the only question I will ask. And then on that, uh, it all depends on, uh, on who you are and uh, how, you, how you feel. And, uh, are you you act? What is your uh, your attitude? So, in that regard, don't be don't be shy. I mean, you can ask many questions. You can you can uh, you have to be curious, and uh, you have to show that you have some uh, some appetite to learn also. So that is the the main thing. And um, because you know, I I need to see in front of me some people. Who are there and who are happy to be there, as simple as that, and who really want to to grow and uh, to be part of a, of a team. That is also one very important aspect because we like to see people who are not working only in their corner, but we are who are also happy to be to be part of a bigger thing. So don't be shy, and you can. You can ask all the, all the questions you want because you know that is the good point of being young. Because if you are in, in a company, you ask many naive questions. Maybe sometimes you will say just rubbish questions. Okay, so be it. There is no no problem with that. You know that is the good thing because if you are young, people will will easily forgive you. They will say, yeah, okay, anyway. Yes, he or she has no big experience, so okay, fine. You can ask those questions, and and you should enjoy this period because if after 20 years you still ask rubbish questions, maybe the, the the situation will not be the same. So take this opportunity that uh, you are coming. You have to discover. You have to be curious about the company you are working for, and and then um, you have to learn. So. You have to show your appetite to learn, and you should also think about all the people around you and see, okay, why are they there? How comes they manage to be successful in this company? And try to to take the the positive points. I mean, uh, you can speak with the senior people of the, the the company, and then you try to understand, okay, what is their added value? What they have done for the company? What they are still giving to the company? And how could I somehow follow the same path? And maybe you can be also critical about that to say, okay, maybe I would do it in a different way. I would be, I would, I would act differently. Why? Why not? I mean, you can, you can have your own ideas about that. But the main thing is that you always have to be curious because if you, 
keep in your corner, you don't ask to, you don't speak to anyone, then you will hardly learn about this and you will hardly make up your mind about who you want to be and what role you want to play in the company. Because the thing is that um, if today I'm recruiting a, recruiting a fresher for, for a job, okay, it will always be for a specific task at the beginning. And I definitely expect you to fulfill these tasks, but that is somehow not the, the most important because on the long term, we want you to stay in the company because we know that we need young people to be the, the managers of tomorrow. And uh, it's as simple as that. I mean, I don't want to put a big responsibility on your shoulder saying it like this, but uh, without young people taking the continuity of the, the group, the group cannot, uh, cannot uh, remain. I mean, and you are the future of the group. You are the future of the, the, the businesses. So uh, this is what we, what we need. Uh, when, we, when we recruit someone, we need to make sure that uh, you, will, uh, you will be able to, um, to continue the, the journey we have started with, uh, with the company. So that's, um, that's the, the most important thing I, I wanted to, to tell you. Um, so always listen, always uh, show your appetite to learn. Definitely, okay, personality is one thing. Don't forget also that you need to fulfill a, a task. So, okay, you have to do your job. You have to show also that you are a hard worker that is there. Um, but, uh, all this goes together. Show your personality, show your uh, your skills, and then uh, everything everything will be fine. And to come back and maybe to conclude uh, on, on the starting point of this, um, because we were talking about uh, what you expect when you are recruited um, and what the employer uh, uh, is looking for. Don't forget one thing: you may not succeed for all interviews you will have. I mean, um, you will encounter also some, uh, some failures sometimes, but don't get too much disturbed about it because, you know, sometimes, and I have been in this uh, situation, sometimes you don't select someone, but it does not mean that this someone is not good. Never forget this. I mean, there can be many, many uh, reasons behind not selecting one, and uh, definitely, it doesn't mean that uh, you are not capable, you do not have the skills, or you need to change your personality. It's not, it's not a bad, uh, it's just um, how it is. So don't overthink about this. Don't ask yourself too many questions, and just, uh, just be yourself. Thank you. I cannot hear you, Pasan. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was interesting. And uh, we have one question for you. This came from a student in India. And uh, maybe because of that, we experience differences in different countries and different states. Uh, he says, some facts like standards we have learned are not the most updated. How would this affect if we wish to join a company like Swiss? <laughs> that, that's very interesting somehow because, you know, I I believe that uh, when you are you are studying, you will learn so many things. Um, and the, your your professors will tell you, okay, it is like this, it is like that, and uh, okay, you will take your notes, you will uh, you will pass your exams. But uh, actually, uh, when you when you join a company, you will realize that things can be pretty different from what you have learned. And um, okay, definitely you have learned about certain standards. I'm telling you, many of those will change. Okay, and there is no big deal about this actually, because you know when uh, when we recruit someone, uh, we don't uh, recruit a robot who can reproduce certain uh, certain standards. That's not about that actually. We um, we want to have someone who is able to uh, to adapt and to, to get adapted to, to different standards. And that's not a problem. I mean, standards are always there to, uh, to improve and to, uh, to change. So, okay, 
if you have been able to pass your exams under certain circumstances, I mean, there is no doubt that if somehow things are changing, you will you will adjust to that, and that is the life actually, because uh, uh, in your career you will have to adjust so many times to so many new things. So there is no no issue with that. All right, Mr. Vigichok, thank you so much for joining us, and I'm sure it was really useful for our participants. And uh, thanks so much for sparing your time being uh, being here at a country manager. I'm sure you're really busy. Thank you so much for your time. Thank sir. you. My pleasure. And thank then, you. Thank you so much. And then we will move on to uh, Amit Siriman. We are at a time where electric automobiles have become a topic, and we have been talking about the car that would water drive themselves. And uh, during this period, Tesla has undoubtedly become a really important company, which has been at the same time they could send a shuttle successfully and bring it back to the planet, which was really on the headline. And Samit Siriman, who is there as an intern in motor design at Tesla, is there in the USA uh, waking up. Uh, and I, I, I was there to assure that he stays awake until the session comes because it's almost midnight to him there in the USA. Uh, to introduce Hamid, uh, he has earned his uh, uh, bachelor's yeah, from the University of Colorado on electrical engineering, and then uh, reading for his doctoral degree on electrical machines and drives at the University of Indiana at Urbana Champaign. He has also been chairman of the University of Motor Student Raj, and now working at Tesla as an intern of motor design. Hamid, your presentation let us know how a company like Tesla would uh, work with an intern. How did you get really get fitted to work out the things you, a fresh graduate, should possess for him to be a part of a company like a tech giant as Tesla? Thank you so much, Prasan. And it's always great to be here. Hope uh, everyone is safe from this pandemic and appreciate everyone taking time out of the schedule to join this time's Congress and special thanks to the organizing committee for keeping it alive with everything that's been going around in this year. And yeah, this is my share of uh, experience on this matter, what really a multinational expects from a fresh graduate. And as you, since you already listened to Nicholas and Sasanka, since they are at a more senior level, I'm sure what they see as what they expect from a fresher sounds more. But here's uh, what I believe uh, from a view, viewpoint of a fresher as uh, what a company really expects. To briefly tell you about myself, I finished my undergrad in University of Morocco in Sri Lanka, majoring in electrical engineering. And after graduation, I took a job at Nestle as an engineer where I worked around one and a half years uh, as an engineer, during which time I also applied for this PhD program in electric motor design, uh, which was my long term goal at the time. And after around one and a half years, I got selected uh, to University of Illinois electric machine uh, group. And after joining there, I had enough time to focus on what I really wanted to study. Um, then during this time, I applied for this uh, internship position at Tesla. Then right now, I am uh, interning there in their headquarters in Palo Alto, California. And um, as I said, so I during my short period of career so far, I had the opportunity to work in two multinationals, Nestle and Tesla. And yeah, they are totally different to companies uh, based on both the maturity and the and the industry they operate in and the, the speed that the industry moves at. And based on my experience, I'll try to put um, list things uh, in the order that I think what matters the most. Uh, let's move to the next slide. Uh, let's go one more. First thing first, I think the most important thing um, what a fresher brings to a company is the fundamental understanding of the of the basics of the basic uh, fundamental principles uh, related to your discipline of engineering. And in fact, this could even be the one the only thing that you bring as a fresher. So it's 
it's extremely important that you have a, a good understanding of your uh, fundamentals. And in addition, uh, it comes in handy when you have some technical uh, expertise, some technical skills, uh, like regardless of which um, kind of engineer you are, uh, it's always useful right, right now to have some expertise in coding. Um, and it's always, as, a, as an electrical engineer, uh, knowing how to use an oscilloscope. Or let's say you are joining a company which is dealing with um, designing power electronics equipment. So it's definitely useful to have build your own power electronic converter at your university while you have the resources and while you have the time. Uh, by doing these things, at the minimum, you know what will be the hurdles uh, when you actually try to uh, build one in the real life. Then um, one of the main things that I want to focus here is the ability to use the tools. Uh, as, um, as an electrical machine designer, I can relate to this a lot. So, um, so we see this finite element software right now being so popular in machine design and everyone's using it. And due to the continuous growth of these kind of software and their capabilities, um, the companies right now heavily depend on this. Uh, these tools. And from my uh, graduate program to here, from university to here, uh, I used to uh, use certain uh, tools for this finite element. But coming here, I, I realized that, okay, Tesla has their own tools. And sometimes the commercial tools that they're using is somewhat different from what I have used. Of course, there are probably tens of uh, these tools uh, released by different companies. And it's impractical for you to learn all of this uh, at the, the, during your undergrad, for example. So my viewpoint on this is, um, since it, it is an essential part of your job too, to be able to model and uh, simulate these uh, designs. Uh, one thing uh, to keep, keep in mind is that if you are familiar with one tool uh, good enough, uh, that is basically going to help you learn the next tool um, even faster. Uh, that is definitely one thing um, that you can do to overcome uh, this kind of um, hurdles in your job that you will face. The next thing is uh, what, I, what I see as a liberty in a multinational company is um, that you can grow into your own area of expertise. Um, in, in my case, for example, let's say uh, I am more in the area of electric machine design, but let's say I'm uh, also interested in thermal side of the machines, for example, uh, how the cooling systems work, how the oil circulation and pumps work. Uh, in this case, however, uh, the company cannot initially help you a lot. Instead, um, the initial, the time investment that you have to put in there has come out from uh, your schedule. If you build enough expertise on these areas, and if you still think that area is fascinating, then you can go ahead and um, convince your management to change your um, area of expertise. And this is one thing that's good about multinationals because there are more possibilities, there are small space to um, grow, you, grow yourself into an expert in one area. Uh, to move into the next slide. One of the most important things that I feel uh, a, a fresher should have is the problem solving skills. Uh, in here, for example, in uh, Tesla, I've been asked to create my own uh, machine loss measuring setup for specific types of electric machines. And here's when the creativity and some level of mechanical aptitude, and which means Having some uh, level of hands-on experience comes in really handy. I can relate to my, my experience a lot here. Uh, during my time in uh, undergrad, for example, I really shied away from uh, building real things. Uh, instead, I focus more on theories and more analytical side of things. However, after joining University of Illinois, my grad program, I had this opportunity to join a special program uh, to build this uh, multi-megawatt level uh, first prototype for a high power density machine, uh, which was led by NASA at the time. 
So, um, and due to the special nature of this machine, so due to very special um, features of this machine, even though we always prefer to outsource it to uh, some other company to build, uh, we ended up having to build it ourselves. Uh, we were complaining at the time. Uh, we had to make the windings ourselves. We had to uh, glue it together. We had to uh, put the put everything together for this machine, basically. And even though I didn't like it at the time, this was something definitely helped me uh, get through the get through these uh, interviews for Tesla to show that I have enough hands-on experience in building things, which comes handy in um, designing something for the company uh, in real life. And having some experience in that area definitely gives you uh, understanding on doing things in different ways. Instead of uh, being stuck in one single way of doing things, uh, you can think of a way around it uh, instead. And having built something uh, similar, of course, uh, you are aware of what things can go wrong and which uh, parts of it you have to be more careful about. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. And the remaining of the points, I think, are equally important in the eyes of the, uh, the company um, when you join the company as a fresher. Being proactive is not waiting for something to happen and being always uh, updated and predict what's going to happen and being aligned with your manager. That's important. And one of the most important things that I see uh, is being persistent. When you join a company like uh, Tesla, which is a very fast moving company, and although when you join, everyone expect you to come to the speed really fast. Uh, it is at the same time, it's no one else's uh, formal responsibility to bring you up to speed. So this is where you have to be persistent. You have to be the owner of your own matters. And even simple things for me, like uh, getting access to testing facilities or getting access to new tools or, or even knowing fundamental process from someone else. Um, this is where you have to be persistent and uh, not wait for uh, others to teach you first, uh, which might be really into your advantage uh, if you keep pushing. And it is this matter that where your communication comes in uh, real handy. For example, uh, you don't want to be that person who keeps bugging your neighbor every time that you have a question. Instead, you want to build your network fast enough uh, in a way that you know where to go um, in each of the problems that will come up. So uh, in Tesla, for example, one of the things that, that fascinates me is that uh, in a one single floor, there's more than 100 engineers who are um, divided in different groups, for example, um, who work in some part of the electric drive train of the car. Uh, for example, it could be like electric motor design, like my group or the power electronics, or the shaft, or the gearbox, or lubrication, whatever. Uh, so all these engineers work in a single floor, uh, which is open to each other uh, and to talk to. However, being the large company it is, it's impossible for a fresher to know everyone. In these cases, um, so it, it is very frequent that you have to go out of your group and to talk to someone else and no one else is going to introduce you, uh, apparently. So uh, it's really important how you approach a new person and how you talk to that <coughs> the, the manager from that other division. Uh, it's these very interactions that will define whether you're getting your things done in, in a timely manner. And in this aspect, uh, certainly my volunteering experience with IEEE has helped a lot to communicate with new people every day. And to, and to correctly communicate with people at different levels. Um, since I mentioned about uh, my experience with IEEE, I think it's always a good thing to have a mentor, uh, regardless of which level of education that you are in, uh, or which level of career you are in. There are certain things, and there are, there's always someone who's more experienced than you. And a platform like IEEE is a great place to know um, these kind of people. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. And another thing that 
a multinational is definitely required to have is the collaborative mindset. Uh, in Tesla, I have seen this a lot, where everyone uh, is open-minded about others' ideas and everyone's bringing their own ideas to the table. And it is so frequent, like every week, I see multiple new ideas, maybe slight things, maybe uh, slightly different way of um, making the winding of the machine, maybe slightly different way of uh, cooling the machine. Uh, and regardless of whether these things will go into the final product uh, of the car, uh, regardless of that, uh, I have seen that these new ideas have always been appreciated by the team, everyone in the team. Uh, let's move to the next slide. And a fresher's life is, of course, a hard life. And because you are being gauged by many measures, your performance, your time management, and many other things. And in, in a company like Tesla, for me, example, I have experienced regardless of how many tasks that you are assigned with right now, uh, there's always new tasks coming in your way. And there's a new task every day that is being assigned to you. So it is important to have some level of um, overall picture in a way that you can prioritize your own tasks in a way that you do not miss on the important things. And it could, of course, be impractical, impractical to approach um, each and every task and try to finish everything. At least um, it is important to uh, achieve the key deliverables that you are required to deliver. Uh, moving on to the next slide. And as I said, um, I, I had the, even though during my very short career, I had the opportunity to work in two different industry, uh, industries and different multinationals. Uh, what I see in Tesla especially is that it's a very fast moving company. And part of the reason being it is in a very fast moving um, uh, a relatively new industry, which is the electrified uh, transportation. To the level uh, where a single breakthrough in let's say battery um, innovation tomorrow could totally uh, change the competitiveness of this market. Therefore, it's so important that everyone stays on top of their fields, on top of uh, what comes out in the market what your competitors are doing and all this. And these things uh, and this speed, of course, is always reflected in day-to-day -day acti activities inside the uh, divisions and departments as well. I'm sure uh, in different companies, in different industries, there might be different uh, qualities that you need to develop uh, to succeed. Uh, for example, in Nestle, as I have seen, uh, it's a relatively uh, established company, uh, which means uh, you may not need to be as uh, keen on the new advances in technology uh, compared to electric automobile, of course. And it could totally be up to that uh, industry, and it's important as a fresher that you adapt to that industry fast enough. And being the fast-moving company uh, that is, uh, I have seen in Tesla like uh, a project that could easily take one month for me in university to finish. They require it to be done in um, less than two weeks, let's say. And so it is always important to have that uh, overall view and being aware of your hurdles uh, to be a more successful person in this um, area. And I think that's uh, all I had to share. Uh, if there are any questions I'd be happy to take. Dr. Sarasamit, uh, I think uh, we will uh, go by the order. Uh, we have already received some questions as well. So we will take them in a way that the speakers will switch uh, one after the other so that everybody gets to ask to speak and we maintain the diversity. Uh, before that, I would like to introduce you uh, Mr. Nuan Samarasekara, who will be joining us for the Q&A. Uh, introducing uh, Nuan, he earned his bachelor's degree in uh, computer science and engineering, which was class honors from University of Maratua. 
and then he earned his master's degree in the field of computer science from National University of Singapore. He is also a certified investment advisor at the Columbus Stock Exchange. And uh, now Nuan Samarasekara is serving as software engineer at Google. Mr. Nuan Samarasekara, we welcome you on board and uh, think that it's better to start with you with the first question. Uh, it was said that the question, does a multinational appreciate teamwork? And if so, but uh, by what means? Maybe you working at Google have a better understanding about that, I guess, and maybe you can relate to your experience as well. Cool. Hi. Um, nice to meet all of you. Um, as the other speakers were also saying, I appreciate the work you guys are doing uh, during this time. So, um, as a person mentioned, I've been um, uh, working at Google for the last um, close to five years now. Um, and um, it's been a long time since I was a fresh graduate. I graduated like 10 years ago, um, right around the time we saw Pankas and my junior batch. Um, so uh, that's a good question. Um, the, I think one big difference between when you're working in like uh, in university uh, scale projects and then you go to work in like a very large company, I think one big shock is, is how different the scales are in, in the things you do. Uh, and I think the focus in um, uh, university projects is for you to learn the technologies and for you to uh, grasp the concepts and uh, apply those. And so you'll be building end-to-end uh, -end on your own, everything like a website or like a, a, a system of its own. Um, but when you build products for uh, in, in companies like um, in big tech like Google, for instance, um, your audience is, is much larger. Like it's probably in the scale of like hundreds of millions of users or, or even billions of users. Um, so the, the team that delivers that product is usually much, much larger. Like talking from my experience, I work in Google Pay. Um, and for Google Pay, we have uh, over 200 engineers uh, in the engineering team alone, uh, spread across across uh, the US, China, uh, Singapore, uh, India, and Australia. And um, then you have uh, business development folks like uh, product management, um, product marketing management, um, UX, uh, UX research, uh, and a lot of uh, other verticals that work together to build the entire uh, product end to end. So um, it's, it's pretty important to understand how you fit into the, this very large team. And, and in fact, it, it's, it's a certainly different set of dynamics, even compared to like working with a four member team or a 10 member team, like what would be like uh, in, a, in a final year project, for instance. Um, and the dynamic is much different because now we're talking about like 200 people. Uh, that you'll be working with. Um, and that is something that is um, very much uh, encouraged in a lot of those large companies because we understand uh, the importance of um, working together in, in, in a big setting. And in fact, this is uh, very much the case because like four or five years ago when Google uh, interviews uh, were doing, when I was interviewing with Google, the structure was that uh, you have like four coding interviews and one uh, system design interview. But now uh, we have actually changed it to three coding interviews, one uh, system design, and one interview called Googliness and Leadership. Um, this one is, is mostly about the soft skills, um, which involve, involve things like teamwork as well, because we identify that as a, a important uh, metric to, uh, when making hiring as well. Oh, thank you so much, Nuan. Uh, thanks a lot. And uh, then I think this question would be better answered by Sosanka, but of course, it would be open to you all. Uh, the question is how effective communication helps in uh, working at a multinational? I propose Sosanka, but of course, any one of the panelists can. Yeah, Pasan. Uh, thank you, Nuan. I think. Uh, 
uh, all of the speakers would agree with me uh, other than your uh, technical skill your communication skills uh, is of paramount importance uh, for your success at the workplace i mean you can have a great idea but unless uh, you're not able to communicate it properly unless you don't it, you don't put it across to the key decision makers of the organization it would be of no use so hence uh, this is extremely critical when i say communication it's not about uh, the number of words that you know in english or the uh, um, the, the complexity in your language you know it's about whether you are able to put your idea in a way the other person is able to understand uh, sometimes uh, it's about being simple in your communication than being uh, complex or uh, using a lot of complex words uh, also to all the engineers here the message i want to pass you please understand uh, in a work environment you will work with a lot of non engineers people who does not have an idea about the language that you are speaking often i feel engineers really because they really, uh, are not aware how to communicate to non technical people in a uh, simple language you know uh, i'm sure others also would adapt to this uh, but that's my message be simple in your communication and also understand your audience and adjust your message accordingly uh, keep it simple thank you thank you sir uh, we just uh, received a question and this directly goes to samit because it's particularly uh, regarding to tesla and the question is samit uh, what's the best way to acquire an interview with tesla application portals or approaching a recruiter and then apply maybe what's the best way to acquire an interview with tesla application portal or approaching a recruiter and then apply i think um, first of all it's important to know which uh, which part of the organization that you want to join so for me for example um so it was my dream to join this company even as an intern um and i somehow um focused more on the electric machine design part and i directly uh, tried to acquire a position uh, with the electric machine uh, design group and there are a number of internship positions for example going on uh, with testing manufacturing and all others so i think first thing would be to um think to yourself um, what would be the position then um, without going through recruit i would uh, i think would be the best way to directly apply the mission is to directly uh, contact tesla or directly apply to the uh, contacts uh, the tesla portal instead of going through a recruit do you have any specific reason to do so um i do not have uh, any specific reason but uh, i think um if you are if you are specific enough about the position that you are applying i think what, uh, what recruiters usually tend to do is that um the the positions are uh, um are shown in a more general way and 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 the positions uh, that are shown in more general positions up more general areas of work like uh, testing or manufacturing and if you really want to get into a certain um, division for example it would be much uh, focused to go through the the portal itself all right thank you so much um we have one more question uh, to maybe this could go to uh noan because he is at google uh does noan the question is does the university grade really matter me repeat does the university grade really matter i don't know how 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 you could respond to that um yeah that's that's a tricky question <laughs> um because um if you talk about the big tech companies like google facebook um apple microsoft um they have to uh, put them sort of put yourself in the perspective of 
them to really understand how the interview process works. Because um, basically we want to optimize for removing false positives and uh, at the cost of false negatives. What it means is that um, those companies, because they'll be having a, a ton of applications that can come in um, every day, uh, uh, there's quite a large volume of applicants to those companies. So uh, it, it doesn't make sense to make false reports. So false positive means that you hire someone who is, who is not uh, uh, performing at the level we expect. Um, false negative is we do not hire someone who we should have hired who is of, of good quality. So we would opt to like, having a false positive is a bigger cost because then you have someone in team that is not performing at the level you want. Um, at the cost of now, you, we can afford to have false negatives because there are so many people applying. So, you know, some but like, basically what I'm saying is like, if you do not get selected, that doesn't mean that you're not qualified for that role. And that happens quite a lot of, quite often. Like I, I was rejected a couple of times from Google as well um, before I eventually uh, got selected. Um, and having said that, um, so the, the point is that obviously a good grade uh, and good academic uh, record just help uh, make you stand out. But, uh, but more than that, I think what uh, does stand out is uh, your passion for um, the technology. Like if you have uh, such projects that you're doing, like you have GitHub projects that you're like uh, contributing to, um, basically like you are passionate uh, beyond just doing your finally project or like uh, whatever that was assigned to you, um, that you take a more active role. And in that, uh, Actually, there was this one um, UX designer in, in my team from Macedonia, and she um, is considered one of the top 26 designers in the world. Uh, and, and the funny thing is she, did, she does not have a degree. Uh, she didn't graduate, um, and she's in Google. Um, so, All right. but, but having said that, that does not generalize uh, to say that we will hire anyone who does not have a degree, it's just that you have to show like uh, you have very passionate and you have like other things to, to back up uh, your, your application. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, Les, there is one more question which, uh, yeah, it's open. Uh, maybe you can suggest that uh, maybe Sasanka to take this. Uh, it's, it reads as, I have a question, which is, uh, oh, maybe in a summary, how can I train myself to always think out of the box? How can I train myself to always think out of the box? Maybe Sasanka, but yeah, it's open. Yeah, uh, Pasan, I would like to uh, supplement uh, uh, the previous uh, answer uh, from Nuan uh, before I answer the, first, the new question. Right. No problem. Uh, you can do so. Very, very quickly, guys. Always think uh, how you can create the best version of yourself, okay? Do not compare yourself with someone else who has a better GPA or a better class than you. Always try to be the best that you can. For example, uh, Hassan uh, with a second lower could be better than Sasanka with a second upper or a first class. And also, at the same time, I want to emphasize the point, Sasanka, uh, with a first class would be better than Sasanka with a second upper, right? So always push yourself to do the best that you can do, but do not compare yourself with someone else because uh, although I have a first class, it doesn't guarantee me a job. And um, because of the other attributes that he has, uh, he would get a job uh, uh, with a lesser class, you know? Uh, so it's not the only thing that you can in interview. Okay, if we go to the... Uh, uh, last question. My advice is that try to interact with people who have a different background to the job background. Now, often we try to uh, associate people who have the same background, who come from the same academic background, etc. Now, if engineers need engineers, obviously you will find engineering answers only. But if you guys, as engineers, also associate entrepreneurs, also associate uh, street smarts who have come from a completely a different background. Also associate uh, people with a marketing background, finance background, 
your solutions to problems would be uh, not silo solutions you know they would be more round solutions considering the practicality of all areas in the value so my advice is um, uh, talk to a lot of people have a lot of people in your network who are different law uh, qualifications or your background and also to emphasize on a point that uh, uh, samit mentioned in his presentation has a have a mentor uh, regardless of the level that you are in uh, whether you are a intern or a junior manager or a senior manager or a ceo have a mentor and mentor doesn't need to be a person who's senior than you or who's earning more than you are it can be a very uh, rich person also but as long as that person is adding value uh, to your domain to your thought process as long as the person is opening up to you uh, in terms of your uh, approach thought process you know uh, that will help to be that will help you to be a more a creative person a person who thinks outside the box yeah that's that's my thought okay thank you thanks so much and uh, i'm sorry if uh, in certain cases i did not get the uh, uh, name of the person who's asking the question but in case in the common questions i do uh, this is penny roy asking how important is the undergraduate project for getting hired i repeat how important is the undergraduate project for getting hired uh, maybe samit or nuha Uh, Alex, I mean, go first. Okay. Yeah, I I try to uh, build at least one part of. I think um, at least in the field of electrical engineering, this is this is the one place that you can uh, get a real hands-on experience before you go into go into the job. So it is um, it is really important that you uh, you understand what you. do uh, what you want to do after the graduation which industry that you are uh, specifying for and and building that kind of uh, practical knowledge uh, using this this um, undergraduate final project for example um that that i think is the is the main value of a final project uh, when you when you just go into the industry as a fresher um anything to add to that Yeah so I think uh, again like um, the perspective to think about this is, is that um it's uh, what we are looking for is again um how passionate you are about tech and the final project is one way in which like like if you say you got an A plus in algorithms it doesn't imply that you are passionate about tech it just implies that you are really good at uh, answering the exam paper and uh, a lot of the grades does not really translate into um your passion because the the majority of the poll that we get uh, as uh, requests to into for interviews are people who are technically uh, good um and that's why they would like go through the online uh, the phone interviews and then they go through for the on site um and what we would look for is like what is your uh, additional thing that that makes you stand out and um an a or an a plus in a certain subject or all of the subjects does not really make you stand out um so but if you have like it does not need to even be the final year project at the point like final year project is one place where within the new city you are given the opportunity to do something hands on and be creative and create something of your own but it could also very well be like uh, other contributions that you do to other projects and um think that you do on your own on your uh, own time as well Thank you so much sir and uh, yeah there are really one more uh, like two more questions which we can take with the time we are permitted to take uh, let me put this question what are the common challenges asia pacific students face when working abroad in multinationals i repeat what are the common challenges asia pacific students face when working abroad in multinationals maybe we can start with some because we have already started working Yes, for a multinational. Yeah, I think I can. I'm sorry. They're asking for common challenges. Maybe you can use. Okay. Today. Right. Um, I can I can start with some things that I thought would be challenges, but um, certainly um, even at a local um, even at a local level, if you work. 
at a multinational uh, Nestle. It has helped me a lot in uh, familiarizing with the systems in a in a multinational. For example, the safety system or, or even the purchasing, like those things um, are very standardized across all companies. So uh, although uh, I expected certain things to be challenges, uh, they uh, they were certainly not. But things like um, getting adapted to the new culture in a place, especially where Tesla, I see that uh, in a team, there, there are people from uh, coming from every part of the world who work in a single team and understanding their culture and understanding how to, how to move with everyone uh, who comes from different backgrounds is, uh, is one important thing in my way. Uh, I want to uh, get the opinion from Nuan as well because he's working for Google, so he should also have a perspective to share with us. Uh, what are the challenges uh, probably or possibly Asia Pacific students face? Maybe they later rectify when they join a multinational company, right? Google? Yeah, so um, I think one common theme around most of those multinationals is that the, the, the team is comprised of uh, quite a diverse set of people. Um, and, and a lot of those companies like uh, uh, try to make it a point to improve the diversity um, of the team as well. And this includes like uh, marginalized communities like LGBTQ+, um, for which Google is like uh, really pushing a lot um, and, and women representation and so on. And also uh, ethnical backgrounds as well. So, um, so the teams usually are uh, somewhat diverse compared to like the university times when all the people are like you know pretty homogeneous. Like everybody's uh, pretty much the same uh, race and all of that. So there's not a lot of diverse opinions uh, uh, during that time. But when you step into uh, a team where diversity is somewhat uh, heavily pro promoted, you have to. I think that's like a little bit of a culture shock as well. Uh, and I think that's something you have to be uh, aware of and, and uh, be ready to, uh, to face. Um, and in fact, we, we actually have in process, uh, like in our process of hiring and all of that, um, efforts to, to, like quantified efforts to make diversification uh, a part of our teams. Um, and the main reason for this being like, uh, when the team is diversified, then you can serve the people uh, who are diverse as well. Like, if you're not, if you don't have colorblind people in our team, this is actually an example. Uh, like because we had like colorblind people in the team, then we could like figure out, oh my god, like our, our product does not work on colorblind people, for instance, you know. And this, you know, basically uh, uh, expands the same way to other aspects as well. All right, thank you so much. And uh, we have one question which I think should go uh, in common to all of you. Uh, the question comes from Mitushan. Uh, he's asking, what does it take to secure the safe position each one of the panelists' company? What does their upper hand to get where they are? Uh, I think you can also see the question on the right-hand side of your panel. Uh, the question is, what does it take to secure the safe position each one of the panelists' company? Uh, basically, what was their upper hand to get where they are? So we go by the order you wish. I think uh, all three of you have different uh, opinion on this. Maybe we can start with uh, Sasanka because he did not speak for a while. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, if I understood the question correctly, like uh, essentially what secures the job that we are in today, right? Uh, exactly. Okay. What they're asking is maybe what is the upper hand? Maybe how did you distinguish yourself or maybe how did you stand out from the rest? Maybe a particular one or two points uh, should be uh, in your personality. Okay. okay. I will I will go to the first point that I mentioned in my presentation. It's about knowing yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. And after you understand what you are capable of uh, and your strengths and weaknesses, basically, uh, stay true to it. I mean, do not try to be someone else. Do not try to portray a different image that you are not. Uh, understand yourself and stay true. To me, uh, values and ethics is something that I believe uh, that uh, someone should not compromise at any point, at any cost. As long as you're staying true to it, true to your values and ethics, I think that could be uh, the success factor. 
and uh, be satisfied with what you get because sometimes it's always not about uh, your capability uh, that matters sometimes a little bit of luck also matters sometimes uh, the, uh, position that you expect today may not come today sometimes it will come two years later sometime later uh, but be uh, hopeful about it and be satisfied with what you with what you have today uh, that's the message that i want to give uh, in a nutshell all right thank you so much uh, maybe samit what do yes. you think uh, i think what i can say is uh, gradually build the background that you need to go to the position that you uh, wish for uh, in my case i can certainly say uh, i i i wanted to join this uh, Place so badly, specifically the motor design group. Uh, so I build uh, all my um, my grad research uh, in some similar areas in a way that I can relate to this. Um, since I, I knew I am going for an uh, interview someday, uh, and I try to build all these things around me uh, in a way that I can relate to this when I want. All right. Uh, Looking to do one as well. What do you think? What uh, make you stand out from the rest when you were selected to Google? Yeah, so I think uh, I, I'll probably re reiterate what the other two uh, panelists were also saying. I think the common theme around here is that um, it, was, it was because you were passionate about that area or, or like you had like a strong focus on, on getting there. And it, uh, it was not by accident uh it, it seems uh, in the other cases as well and the same with me as well i uh, like uh, i was very passionate about like problem solving um and algorithms uh from the uh i was i was uh competing for uh, the international olympiad uh, in mathematics uh, when i was 14 15 and so on um and so uh that I think did help a lot um, in in showing uh, the interest. And um, also, I was uh, doing my own startup uh, before um, uh, Google uh, called out for, for 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 interviews. And I think that also sort of uh, shows um, passion for, for for tech in general. Uh, and that combined with like academics and all of that is it's it's, it's, a, it's a holistic package at the end of the day. Um, that makes decision. All right. Um, thank you so much, uh, all three of you. And uh, we do have uh, Dr. Zia Ahmed, uh, who is actually uh, the top five knowledge in the membership uh, head of membership activities in Region 10, joining from Australia. And I think Dr. Zia also has some perspective to share uh, regarding the uh, final year projects and their relation to being get recruited. Dr. Zia, may I invite you to add your thoughts as well? I, I think that was a very good question about two of the importance of undergraduate project. Um, if you are going for a, for a job after your first degree, that's one of the very important thing in your hand to sell yourself. Now, when you apply for a job, you do mention your degree and your subjects and your marks that get you the interview, but that doesn't get you the job. When you go for the job, when you are selected to shortlisted for an interview, they will not be looking at your uh, mark sheet or your subjects because they have already read it in your application what your qualifications are, and that's why they have invited you for an interview. What they will be looking will be are you able to sell yourself? And your undergraduate project is a very important commodity in your hand to sell yourself. So try to use that not only to show the technical content of that, because your technical project may not be relevant to, to the employer, but what they will be looking will be, how did you plan that project? Did you look into that? resources? Did you look into the budget side? Did you look at the timelines to finish the project on time? Uh, did you work in a team? Those will be the things which they will be looking at, not the technical things in that, in that project. So in this year, final year project is very important to send yourself to convince that you have a process to think, uh, to think about things, plan, uh, get resources, 
make fraud contacts if you had hurdles in solving some problem in the project how did you start solving those problems those will be the typical things the interview panel will be looking so don't think that your under project uh, undergraduate project is not important it's very important to sell yourself am i clear right. oh thank you thank you so much dr dia yes and uh, let me uh, because now we have almost reached our uh, timeline we might have to conclude at this point before that let me invite all of the speakers to switch on your cameras because i typically reach and pen is why w l organizing committee would like to take a, screen, a photograph this way but unfortunately we cannot get together and stand for a photograph still they would like to make a memory and have that uh, as a memory in the ipcc region that this way that we did have this session in the uh, congress so uh, maybe sarita you can take the photograph and let me know that you are done. yes checking right now okay done All right. Thank you so much. And uh, let me conclude the session by uh, reiterating the things I summarized them uh, in the way as much as I could do so. Uh, so, in summary, what I understand is there could be two types of positions. Naturally, it could be a technical position or it could be a leadership position. You are applied to at the first part of the, uh, the profession, but later you do go into the managerial position. Uh, eventually particularly you mentioning what mr vikishop said even though you are recruited for a particular a particular uh, a particular position in time you have to take the leadership and the responsibilities of the company as well so if you are looking for a, a technical comp a technical position the technology and the understanding of the technology you have do really matter but if you are looking for a leadership position like a management position leadership might sometimes outrun and leadership might come before the technical capabilities however in common i think uh, as i could hear from the panelists staying hungry and staying to uh, the need to learn always do matter irrespective of where you want to join and uh, be yourself and demonstrating your own personality also do matter in whatever the position is and there are some key takeaways i could just note down associate people from different backgrounds have a mentor who could help you that is not need to be a really senior person but who could really add a value to your character and learn gradually and be yourself but try to approach gradually instead of trying to jump into position because it always takes time for you to reach a higher standard and a higher position so that's what i could drop down i uh, jot down i'm sure uh, you have a uh, more than i could do from this session so let me thank you all one by one starting with mr nicolas vigishov a country manager of swiss and mr sasanka jaydas a senior manager head of active supply chain from nestle mr nuan samrasekara software engineer from google and mr samit siriman uh, a motor design intern at tesla at the same time i'd like to thank mr samita sivakumar Uh, the regional student representative for heading us and organizing all these and letting us do the session on behalf of the region 10 asia pacific region students uh, of uh, the ipcc e uh, we are so uh, we do regret that we are not in a position to meet the speakers uh, and appreciate them as we used to do but let me thank you all and extend my heartfelt gratitude for sharing time i know most of you it's the office time and thanks a lot for spending uh, at least one and a half hours on behalf of us and on behalf of the student members of ipcc we do have a virtual token of appreciation which will reach you soon we do regret that we could not shake your hands and express our heartfelt gratitude but we are so thankful to all of you uh, for being here and sharing your thoughts thank you so much Thank you, Pasan. Thanks to all the speakers, and let me also give Pasan a token of appreciation as well for doing a great job. Um, and I would like to also thank our entire team for behind this uh, whole planning, especially Pasan for doing a great job with this session. Um, uh, I would like to uh, brief our tomorrow session. It will be from one to uh, three twenty p.m. Uh, Bangkok time. uh we'll be covering about best practices in running student branches uh before moving on i would like to 
ask Ms. Emil to brief lightly about the quiz session for students. Thank you, Dr. Shavi. Uh, hello, participants. Now it's time for the quiz. Uh, please note that now every member of the team could participate in the in the quiz. Links to access the quiz of the respective session are shared with you via email, and the link to access the quiz is also available in the chat box. The formula for the calculation of the final marks after each quiz is shared in WhatsApp group and through email as well. So your quiz is ready. You are requested to please click on the link in the chat box or click on the link using uh, email uh, through your email. But make sure the time of the quiz is of only three minutes. So thank you. Good luck. Thanks, Ms. Emil. So Next is our networking session. So this time it's going to be uh, different. We are going to team you guys up for a survival challenge. So uh, the links for the networking sessions are being sent to your mail. Uh, and I have also dropped in the chat as well. So we will be starting in five minutes. So let's see you guys there. So I again thank all our speakers, Pasan, all our organizing committee and all the attendees. Uh, thank you all. Thank mm -hmm. you.